Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode uh, on the football dugout, and this time we're doing something different. Uh, it is the season review, and Liverpool have finished as champions of England for the 19th time, the first time in the Premier League. It's still going to be 19th time. Um, the Premier League season is over, but the FA Cup, the Europa League, and the Champions League is yet to play for for the rest of the for Arsenal, Chelsea, uh, Man United, and Man City. Uh, but, we're going to pick out some key moments from the longest ever Premier League this uh, season. I think this is a season like no other we've seen uh, in our times. And this drew its curtains with Liverpool FC winning the league. We're going to try and cramp up 12 months of football into just 50 to 55 minutes of this uh, small live session. Okay, so let us begin. Let's fall on the panel. We have some very amazing people here. Uh, my host Duncan, he's an admin at the football dugout. Uh, there's Keen. Keen is a part of Liverpool FC Goa and Liverpool fans we have in the supporter club. Uh, Austin is also a part of Liverpool Supporters Club Goa and he is a part of the uh, Qatar Reds as well. He's a very lucky fan. He, he, he got to watch Liverpool, see them lift the Club World Cup in Qatar. And Shivangi is here. She's a part of Delhi Cop. She recently is one of the only one of us, probably, who's heard Jamie Webster's uh, boss night here, over here. Oh, me too, as well. Oh, you as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, Qatar. <laughs> in Qatar, yeah. And we have the very famous Sahil Tawara, uh, professional footballer for Hyderabad FC, previously also played for. FC Goa. Uh, so welcome guys, welcome to this uh, a podcast or a live session, whatever you want to call it. And Hi. we're just going to cram 50, into 50, 55 minutes the whole season of local football club. Okay, uh, so first question is going to be a very cliche one. Um, 30 years, how happy are you to see the Premier League logo on the wall of champions. Let's start with Sahil. Uh, I mean, obviously, we are, like all supporters, we're really excited and happy, and and more than anything, I think it's more of a of a relief because of the amount of time we've waited, and you know, there's been times we've been really close with uh, I don't know, like a ten point lead with I don't know a month and a half left, or you know, and. Uh, it's always been getting over the line that we struggled with over the years. So, you know, even though we had uh, quite a lead for quite a while, I think all of the Liverpool fans, at least I, wasn't, you know, as comfortable as I'd like to be with that kind of lead because of the times we've bottled it, if you want to call it, in the past. So, it's good to finally get over the line and, you know, win the title. So, you know, it's more than relief, more relief than anything else. Asan, you were there with us uh, when uh, Gerard slip, when we couldn't go past Man City. How happy are you to see that Premier League trophy over there? I think, uh, like Sahil said, like you know, uh, it's it was never too easy to, uh, I mean, be a Liverpool fan. Like you know, like seeing the team uh, uh, having their ups and downs, bottling it so many times, and of course, like you know, there's a uh, there's a stat which says that, like, you know, any team that is leading at the time of Christmas, they always end up winning the league. We have done it like three or four times, but we always ended up losing. And this time, finally, we did it. Like, you know, we finally broke the curse. And I think it's just too overwhelming, I can say. So, yeah, I'm very happy about it. 30 years. It's amazing feeling. Shivangi, uh, in terms of a banter and your friends around. I'm, I'm sure you must be surrounded by Man United fans and Man City fans. Uh, how, I mean, you, how are you feeling being a champion? I mean, I can't say about meeting a Man City fan in real life yet. I mean, that is a phenomenon that I have not yet <laughs> been privileged of having. I've had Man United fans in them telling how great they were and how we have not to run the day. And especially remember there was this Punjabi song about how yeah. this guy whole album and it's like how we haven't won Nobody the league and how the league, Pogba like. and everyone, especially Pogba and everyone and now we have won the league and now 
calls are in different code and someone else is coding history it's amazing it's like reliving and being that fan again keen you're probably the youngest fan over here yeah but you've not you've not seen <laughs> Uh, I I I think I think I I I started watching Liverpool at probably one of the best and worst times I started watching the 2014 season and I started supporting Liverpool for the 2014 season so it was a mixture of like watching Suarez and started just killing the league and then we just bottled it against Chelsea um so yeah it was I I'd say I I joined it at prob- joined support I I started started supporting this club at probably like a very rough time and I mean it's been a hell of a journey honestly cuz going through the different teams and just seeing how the team has evolved and that too I feel like I'm super privileged you know being so young and having to see Liverpool win the league so yeah it's just amazing what about you Duncan uh, what do you have to say I don't I don't really want to have anything to say about this I was a, a very a die hard Liverpool fan right from Thing. Like even I have a brother who's a Man United fan. I mean, right now he's not there for me to ban. I have a brother and a father who are <laughs> Liverpool fans. So it it was because every time I called my dad, he always used to ask, say, "What oh, did Liverpool won? United lost." And I'm like, I I couldn't really like respond to those things because I'm not used to because I've seen my team winning so much that now over like for past seven years we haven't been up to the mark. because of all the things that have happening after in the aftermath of the Fergie era but yeah we are coping right now seems to be doing pretty well not point wise but yeah culture wise yeah that is what is more important that the club is going forward and yeah liverpool i won't take anything away from liverpool this season actually no matter whatever happens I was never on the null and void brigade or whatever you, you call it because in the first place you have played some really good football and I was present for the first game where Manchester United and Liverpool drew at Old Trafford. I was present the next day was my birthday. I thought I was going to get a birthday gift, free birthday gift, but Lana ruined it all for me. So yeah, and then in January again when you all beat us two nil, that's when I was like. Okay, they have to win the title this year because if they don't win it this time, after going so front, so hard, then I, I, my brother wouldn't be able to live with what I'm going, whatever I was going to say back to him after that, or any Liverpool fan. But yeah, it was it was a nice, nice season in in total as such. There were highs and lows. Yeah, the continuous win streak. Yeah, it has it had a lot of. positives not not for other fans though hmm. okay uh, you can carry on duncan you can ask for whatever you want so uh, so basically what what do you all, i'll start with hasan uh, what do you think separated city from and liverpool this season because they were the only contenders i'll say in the start then later on they drifted apart so what do you think i think what separated city from liverpool is consistency liverpool has been consistent uh, this season in terms of uh, performance of course not after the post uh, lockdown but before that yeah we have been very consistent whereas uh, city has been losing points on um, the lower uh, with the lower half of the teams like you know such as uh, uh, norwich like you know the biggest uh upset for city i think that was like you know but uh, yeah and of course they have i think around nine 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 losses if i'm not mistaken yeah. so compared to that what really did keep us on our feet and into the race was the uh, consistency um, yeah if you go to see yeah compared to the previous seasons how they were it yes. actually made a lot of difference yeah and Kyle, what's your view on that? Would you agree with whatever he said, or do you want to uh, add something more to that? No, I think just what helped us was, you know, usually teams don't have, um, at least squads don't have the experience of being in a position where you're leading the league with, I don't know, two months to come, or you know. Uh, so I think we had a lot of players this year who were there last year, you know, the likes of Henderson and 
you know Milner with his experience, Van Dyke, and you know all these senior players, who, you know, know when to keep calm and not to you know just break high and things like that. Uh, about being in the lead, so just to take us over the line. So I think that really helps. Uh, and I, to be fair to City, I don't think we are a, a team that's actually 20 or 25 points uh, ahead, that kind of difference between Liverpool and City. I think it's a lot closer. It's actually neck and neck. They obviously lost key games and, you know, went through a bad patch, but I don't think they're that far behind Liverpool or, you know, should have been a lot closer, but I, I'm not complaining, you know. I, I like to... I prefer it when we win with this kind of match. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I, I guess it was like the, for the first time, I guess the difference was so big. that it. But at the end, like our post-lockdown, it somewhat mellowed down. But yeah, the difference was so big that I I don't think so. Any fan even thought that sit, that Liverpool would bottle it from there. I know inside, inside y'all all were like, we are going to be champions, we are going to be champions. But y'all were just keeping it keeping it in because it has happened so many times that you all didn't want to get it out. Uh, so, like, so, Shivangi, what did you feel in after... after uh, let, let's not go with December. Let's go with when you all beat City the first time in the season. What was your feeling at that time? So, the first time, the 3-1 thing. I mean, that was the match where I was for sure 100% positive and over the no, positive, we are going to win the league. I mean, you were winning all the matches till then. But then that City match with 3-1 and that pass, that famous Salah goal that happened in the end with the Alexander Arnold Trent and then Robinson assist and that that ultimate goal, the whole team was just poetry in motion and that is where that came from. And like, okay, if we can beat City with this margin and if we can really ruffle up Pep Guardiola to that limit where he becomes a meme, then surely nothing can beat us from here now, right? Yeah, the season is how we wanted it to go from there onwards. Your take on it, Keen. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, you can continue, Shivangi. I mean, after that performance, I feel that there was a fear among the other teams. I mean, the mentality monster that we call ourselves. That, okay, Liverpool is on their best this time and we might just do the heavy metal we talk about. So, yeah, that helped us a lot, that whole mentality thing. True. Keen, your take? Uh, like, what was, could you repeat the question? Yeah, just basically what separated y'all from the other teams, basically. Let's not go with City, but from the other teams in the league. I mean, personally, for me, um, compared to our previous seasons where we had our attack really sorted out, where we would score four or five goals, but at the same time concede two or three goals in the process, I feel in that sense, our team has um, improved has stabilized in the sense that we can win games and we can still we can win games consistently, which I think was the most important part about the season is that we didn't focus like everything wasn't focused on like the attack or the defense. It was just we it felt like a proper complete team, um, regardless of like the small fact factors where uh, we missed like a creative midfielder. And, uh, but other than that, I feel like our consistency really won us the league. Does anyone feel somewhere where uh, Kevin De Bruyne's injury or, or Laporte's injury also played on the city? Um, for sure, for sure. For sure. Missed out quite a, a lot of games. Yes. So the city have no excuse because they have quite a team. They have a team. I think they have almost two first teams and one B team also, which is as good as a first team. For sure. I mean, if you go to see uh, Kevin De Bruyne, already he has like 20 assists. And it clearly shows, even though he missed so many games, he still plays such an important role in the City team. And yeah, I feel like that his injury played a huge role in the in City's downfall, if I might say. Sorry, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah should go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, Conrad, yeah, of course, I do agree about this, that uh, De Bruyne's uh, injury and... Uh, Laporte's injury might have uh, been uh, might have affected the city's performances, like you know, in the start. But then again, of course, city doesn't have any excuses because they have that kind of uh, bench, you know, who can cover up for these players. But then, if you also remember, Allison being the main one of the main players of our team was injured for nine games, the first starting nine games, and what happened is 
Adrian was called up. He started the games, and then the defense was a bit. I mean, we did concede goals, but then of course, what was important was like you know winning every match. So yeah, I think injury was there. Injury was there for Liverpool as well. Like you know, when it comes to uh, uh, the importance of a player, so I think Allison being one of the most important players. So yeah. Yeah, if you go to see Allison and Van Dijk have been like the main, like they have stabilized your team a lot. That's Absolutely. what I have seen from the outside. Yes, and with the way Henderson has played the leadership role, yeah, it actually helped you all quite a lot. So yeah, uh, least goals conceded in this year's. league how how do you feel about that compare if if you go to see y'all have i i'm not quite sure about the stats of last year but this year it has it quite kind of ended up being quite close between the clubs that were first to third if you go to see like liverpool conceding 33 in total man city 35 i guess yeah yeah and united who were yeah. way away with Very bad record, whatever you can call it. We ended up with conceding just thirty-six goals. So, what do you all have to say about that? Yeah, keeping aside that you all had in the starting, you all had a bit of uh, a a bit of a hurdle to overcome with Allison out. So, yeah. Um, I think any that, any of you can answer. Oh, I mean, I I think that obviously the defense. Uh, I don't think we were as I think more than keeping clean sheets or you know being super super tight at the back I think we just knew how to win games like I don't think there were some games where we did concede and you know we weren't as solid or you know as watertight as you would call it behind but I still think that we you know we knew how to win games and uh, you know it's hard sometimes just to be watertight at the back when you have your full back just flying up and down for For 90 minutes, you know, I, I don't even know how we don't concede more goals. To be honest, because these guys are just Trent is like another winger, Robertson doing his own thing. But um, it just shows that they are really well organized, and you know, with the, obviously the defensive midfielders covering in Fabinho and whoever else is doing that job. Um, but I think overall, they just knew how to uh, win games, control games, when to attack, when to defend, all of that. I think. Um, that i think what really helped us in terms of you know more than really not conceding or being what right at the back just knowing how to get the result anyone else would like to add to it mm. conor what about you if you you can add if you have something to say uh mostly i think it was i think we would have considered a lot less goals if the season was had its continuity uh, post lockdown we, we did a let in a lot of goals four at man city uh, two at arsenal which are games which we probably don't want to lose we wouldn't have lost probably if, if the if there was a, a, a continuity in the season yeah our full backs need a little more a, a cover uh, from the second center back that is uh, joe gomez because van dijk is the one that is um, trying to run the show from behind alone and to, uh, to be honest a, a, a liverpool is not been in a position where we are the club that is sitting back and defending most of the times with the goals we have considered have been on the counter attack so our defenders also don't have that kind of uh, space where they you know they do some uh, something uh, rubbish with the ball apart from one or two mistakes which we made this season but yeah. don't don't you think but don't you think after the injury of mate gomez actually did a pretty good job for for whatever he has done after the injury he he, he has done a fantastic job obviously but but there is no a uh, stability over there in the middle suddenly a uh, mate comes in suddenly lovren comes in lovren gets injured suddenly joe gomez comes in again and that stability has not been there at the back which is i think one thing we really need to improve on but i have faith in the joe gomez and van dijk partnership i would agree with that call that in the sense that 
um the stability of our defense is not there i mean if we want to be a, a team which is winning consistently every year uh, a trophy every year i feel like we we should have a proper backup or a proper proper squad depth in the sense that we can swap out a class midfielder for a, another class midfielder who we can trust you know i feel like henderson has been amazing this season um you know just ho- holding the ball and just controlling the full team it's been a really important role yeah okay uh, i think sahil will have to leave uh, sahil before you go um, just tell us your favorite moment of the season um like if i had to pick one moment i like really i was just thinking about it before the call and um i really think the difference that stood out at qc season on season for me was just the consistency like you know uh like games where you thought otherwise like oh we're going to be you know we're going to no, no, one moment point. i think one one moment in uh, the season i think one moment i think was the villa game where we were losing 1-0 i think till 89 yeah. or something and i was like ah damn you know invincible all of this bloody villa out of all the players you know uh, out of all the that teams, was right the, uh, and then robertson i think got some robertson got a goal and then mane got a goal some 89 94 and i was like this is ridiculous <laughs> so then that was uh, just on, on the on just ahead of the this thing game the next game we were playing was man city at home oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we lost that game against villa we wouldn't have been in the same frame of mind for that man city game <laughs> Correct, correct, and then I think just the celebration after that. Also, I think psychologically also it plays like a huge impact. Where you, you know when you're you think you're going to be losing a game or you think you're going to drop points and out of nowhere you like sort of you know get the three points. I think that more than just those three points, it like plays a bigger role on in the larger scheme of things. So I think that's one moment that really you know changed things. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Sahil, for your time. Uh, I know Thanks, guys. It was really work. fun. Sorry, thank I you. have another commitment, and you know I can't no, be okay. here for the entire chat. But thanks, thanks, and I hope yeah. it was great. Thanks, see, see you. Thank see. you, Sahil. Thanks, sir. Okay, uh, guys, let's do the run through to the full uh, season. Okay, uh, we're going to do a small run through to the whole season, and it didn't start off well for Liverpool uh, in the pre-season. First they lost. a uh, quite a few games uh, they lost to napoli they lost to city Leeds. community shield they lost to... yeah that was such a sad yeah, game was... <laughs> the kyle walker that is a major trophy for man city <laughs> that is a crazy <laughs> yeah so uh, basically pre season did not uh, turn out well the only two games we won were one is bristol i think and one is tranmere rovers uh, how do you think was the impact going into the a uh, community shield and the first game of the season against uh, norwich knowing that we had a very bad pre season and we have not signed anyone yeah i mean go. okay keep yeah when we go. started i we started i feel like we started off pretty badly because i mean uh alison got injured and i feel that that's just like i, I if anything it just showed that we were consist we were hell bent on you know we want to win the league we want this or oh, we want to play good so even though the alison injury i feel like the victory we got at norwich is just a moment where we show that you know we're here to win even though we had such a big injury in the beginning of the season so we could adapt ourselves okay so we could adapt ourselves in the starting of the season even after the ancient injury we knew like okay now our defense has to play a greater role than they were playing before in the pre season of course we were experimenting and we did not take the games as seriously as we should because that was not the ultimate game pre season is to just try out things and see what is going to finally work in the premier league right and now in the premier league with an injury we still managed to play because our team has this thing where alison and van dijk are going to control everything and we're just going to press forward and score goals But in changing it in between, like the first game itself, just showed how much we wanted this to happen this time. Asan, were you scared going into this thing, uh, seeing our pre-season performance? Uh, like, did you think for the Man City game that we need to sign some players because this is just not working out in pre-season itself? It's not working out. What are we going to do with the league with teams like Man City in it? I honestly thought, like considering how we have performed last season, I never expected our team to go 
so far like you know and end up winning the trophy i really didn't have hope because of the pre season results and of course the other teams um, splashing out cash buying players spending 200 300 whatever millions like you know i i, I didn't expect uh, liverpool to actually fight for the title this year but then the way i think the moment when the mo- i think one moment where, where it actually uh, where i actually realized that yeah liverpool is going to contend for the title is when we actually uh, beat uh, man city the the match against man city was so important that's the time when i realized like okay fine like you know we are taking the title this season no matter what like we are definitely going for it so yeah i think that's about it before we go to uh, the man city game um I think uh, we uh, Liverpool lost Adrian. Uh, sorry, uh, Allison in the first game against uh, Norwich, and Adrian came up and he stepped up to the occasion. Um, soon after that, we played the Super Cup uh, sem- uh, final versus Chelsea, and he turned out to be the hero of the game. Yeah. Keen, what are your thoughts on uh, Allison? Uh, sorry, on Adrian's impact. I remember. I remember Allison. watching that game, and I was. It was such a nail biter that game because. It was the. I think in the first half it was a dry first half, and then in the second yeah. half he scored. Uh, I think it was Origi who scored. Yeah. Was it Origi? Yeah, Origi, Origi who scored, and I was I was so happy. No, uh, I think Chelsea scored first. If I'm not. Yeah, Chelsea scored first. Yeah, Chelsea scored first, and I was watching it with a friend who was actually an Arsenal supporter, and he was so disappointed with me. He's like, "What is happening? You're losing to Chelsea." I was like, "Oh man, we're just having." symbolic you know we played pretty badly in the first half but then when we scored the origi goal I, i the team literally stepped up and you know we tried we tried we kept trying and it went to penalties and you know liverpool don't have a good record in penalties cuz uh cuz of the fa cup and against city and everything so that was uh, really intense and i remember like i was i remember thinking hey adrian's a new signing and he's like a he, i would say like a veteran Uh, so it was it was really cool. it was really amazing to see how he literally played for the uh, penalty shootout and he won us the title. It was yeah, amazing feeling. Shivangi, so, do you have faith in Adrian uh, stepping up to Allison because? Oh, I'm not going to lie here. Allison was carrying us blunders. Yeah, so I am really not going to lie. So I had this whole argument prepared in my head where this is not really an important trophy and it's just a random. <laughs> And it's just not relevant, right? Because our aim was Premier League and Champions League, so I'm like, "Can't think it." And then Adrian saves us like every time, like in the end, I'm like, "Okay, with Chelsea, Adrian saves us, and it is relevant. We are the international travel, almost going to win it now, and that was important, and it made us believe in Adrian more than you were used to. Like we were doubting him since the very start, and you were like, 'He is never going to be able to replace Allison,' but still, he made a space in the team and carried us forward." for a very long time soon after the uh, adrian game i think we went to then after once adrian was there we went to the man united game and that was when the first time we dropped points after seven games of the season uh, but that wasn't exactly adrian's fault i think that, that was, was a Al- no that was not adrian's because fault but every, that was allison uh, in goal ha uh-huh, sorry not allison but even the when we dropped points in the man united game like then they remember when lanana scored the first united game yeah And in that United game, the first goal that Manor scored, Mane or Origi had fallen yeah. down, and the Origi, yeah, Origi had fallen down, and the referee should have acknowledged it, but that did not happen, and that it was like a fluke goal of sorts. But in Manor, equal. That was a and- pure count, fast play <laughs> counter attack goal. You uh, can't call it a fluke <laughs> because we have done it several times. I mean, no one was really <laughs> focusing on. I mean, no one. You can ask. You can ask Chelsea that who considered I, like what two from that same counter attack. I, I feel. I feel. I feel like we were. We were, we were just. We were just a bit shook because the referee didn't give us the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we were like, was concerned. Let's go. Let's go into VAR. Manchester United. VAR. Let's talk about VAR and how some team qualified for top four because of VAR. <laughs> how a team got relegated because of VAR. Oh man exactly that, that was that was sad that's oh, so sad that's that was really heartbreak i mean that was not fair that was not, so it, it was it was it was it was it was it goal line technology 
Golan technology. It's a Golan technology because we but they are cannot cannot uh, come in between of a Golan technology. That's their rule. That's so sad. They have, they have, they have separate. Can I just ask one question? Bodies. So, yeah. who all of you are in favor of VR here? Like, who all really want VR technology to stay here? I'll agree that VR. <laughs> I'll agree that VR to makes stay. Shape. Yeah, everyone wants. VR should stay, but pe- the people who handle VR need to need a lot of training. <laughs> need a lot of training. If VR is used properly, it's it's good. It's very good. It needs Actually, to be used properly. Because, because when we can see it with the naked eye properly, what happens? These people have like, I, they can keep on taking replays just to see what happened properly, and yet they get it wrong. So. And they I have like, I, and, they, and they have like slow motion and everything, and I exactly. And, and we, and, and I still, I am still trying to figure out what is that line that they draw for the yeah. object. It's not even <laughs> yeah, a straight line. I, I feel the like camera I, angle is so bad. Yeah, I feel it needs better kind of AI to draw those uh, lines as well. So bad. Yeah, coming back to like before you move to something as uh, Conrad, when you mentioned Karius, I just saw Hassan, like he was like. God is he closes his eyes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what was that moment for you? How did you feel when that happened? And then coming back and winning the Champions League and now the title Premier League. I don't even want to think about it. Trust me. <laughs> I was watching this game with a bunch of Egyptians back in Dubai when I was in Dubai, and the whole thing what happened was when Salah got injured. Like you know, it was like you know. The entire Egypt supports Liverpool because of one player. Because of Salah. Okay, yeah. but if Salah is removed from Liverpool, they all are Real Madrid fans. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Okay, <laughs> so, it's easy. So, like that's easy. It, it's it's like that. It's like that. It's like that for Egyptians. They only support Liverpool for Salah. Otherwise, they're all Real Madrid fans. So the moment Salah got injured, halas everyone that they're like they start abusing each other and. They have sudden or suddenly like you know okay fine now they want Real Madrid to win like you know and I'm like what the hell like you know what are these guys up to like you know players just got injured like you know what is wrong with you guys and I'm still supporting like you know because I still had faith in my team like you know come on because we have been doing so well we had like quality players we have reached so far then comes the moment Lord Carius. Not gonna, but, but, not but, gonna. But 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 uh, regardless of the fact of fact of Carius, I feel. Like in that game, it just showed how much more experience and class Real Madrid had in playing under so, those circumstances and the the pressure, because they look so much stronger and they look so so much more confident compared to us uh, on the big stage. True. I actually but... was watched that match with with one of uh, Liverpool L- LFC Goa members, Ali Ruel. I watched with him so, and he was actually. Sending me to the washroom again and again, and let, not letting me watch the game. It was like, just go away. Don't, don't, don't look at the screen because uh, there have been instances when I have watched Liverpool games along with um, along with any member of the LFC Goa. This thing, Liverpool ha- have not ended up winning. So he kept sending me, and then I, when I just came back, that's when I saw that. Salah got injured, and I and I just told him at that moment that if y'all if y'all ever had a chance of winning this game, it was because of Salah. But right now, I don't see it happening. And then with all those blunders, and then Bale's brilliant goal that actually just sealed it. The third one was just a topping actually on the cake. You know, this is uh, this is the game that changed Liverpool forever. Actually, Uh, yeah. I, I went to sleep depressed in the night and I woke up in the morning and I see a video of Klopp singing drunk, fist drunk, singing muttered at all the fucking luck and we're going to bring the club back to Anfield. And he, he made a promise that he's going to bring the club back to Anfield the next day. And I was like, what is this man? He just lost a Champions League final and he's like so cool about it. Like that kind of... Yeah, go ahead. You want to take- Retrospect, that match is amazing. Like that match, we define it as a moment when the, our history got changed, and everything better started from that match. Like, it was threshold. But living that match, watching us lose, watching every player cry. In the I end. mean, I I mean, I feel like um, 
the, the saying you have to hit rock once you hit rock bottom there's no way going low it's only it's all only up and yeah. club man that man is genius no man other uh, even, even even James Milner said it uh, before the season started. He he made a statement saying once Liverpool were going to win one trophy, the others are just going to flow after that. You just need to win that one trophy for, first. Give give the man some respect, man. He's Hamis Milner. He's not James Milner, man. <laughs> okay, uh, coming back to the season, we need to finish very quickly because we got a lot of things to do. Um, first, the Man United game was the Aston Villa game uh, where we came back. From one zero down, I think Sahil already spoke on about that, yes. and that played a very important role into uh, uh, going into Man City and winning that game because that is the time where we really started to believe ourselves. And this is, I think, around November tenth of or eleventh, if I'm not mistaken. It was very. It it, it, it was prior to a, a long a long run of games for Liverpool FC uh, in November. After that, uh, we had to play almost eight games in 22 days in December. Um, this is the time when a, a Liverpool usually loses the plot going into uh, your uh, January. Uh, but this time, we were very stable in December. We were very stable in January as well. Uh, what do you think has changed for us to bring that kind of uh, stability? Where out of the out of the eight games we played in 22 days, we lost only one game. That is to. Aston Villa, which our kids played, because we had to play in Qatar the next day. So, where do you think that uh, we have improved in the in the same team that played last season, but but did not lose the plot in December? I think it was the focus that was very sharp with us. We had our goals very clear, like which match we have to like, which leagues we have to focus on, which leagues we can forego because. It's unfair to expect one team to perform always, and just to play eight matches in one month is unfair. First of all, the whole thing. But then, even after that, we have players that come up when we don't expect them to. Firmino was not having a really best of his starts, but in December he turned up and he just started. He was a game changer and game winner for us. Like we won the cup because of him. So it's just different players who come up any time and just drop. It's either Mane or maybe Salah or maybe Firmino. One of them is having their day, and it's their form that is working for us. So it's just the whole chemistry between the team is very strong. Uh, in uh, in uh, Liverpool, were drawing to on uh, uh, Napoli at that moment. Um, they were not sure of their Champions League uh, qualification. They had to go to um, Salzburg to win a game in December. Uh, do you think there was too much pressure of the Champions League as well, and? Uh, and Liverpool did not concentrate much on the Champions League this time, and they yeah. considered uh, putting more pressure on the Premier League. Yeah, I feel I feel like um, as much as as hard as you try, as much as you try, um, having a team which doesn't have the depth as City or you know, and, and not any other uh, big, huge, uh, financially stable club, or whatever big club who has a lot of depth. I feel like whether you try your best to stable you to give your importance to the Champions League and the Premier League together with our team, which we we which our team, which the team we had, I feel like it just mattered more. The Premier League mattered more compared to the Champions League because we won the Champions League the previous year. Regardless of the fact that we won it, uh, the Premier League meant more because we've never won it in thirty years. And yeah, the So the Red Bull game was really. It was just another instance of our mentality and how we will fight till the last. And that Salah goal. It was a Salah goal, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Salah goal. It was such a. It was. I feel like Salah this season had lots of weird goals. He was not scoring them. He was just. It was just somehow going in, and yeah. So that's my take on the Red Bull game. But yeah, it was, that's... yeah. The yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. Then we went into uh, Aston Villa and lost five zero. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts, um, Hassan? What are your thoughts on how the kids played that, uh, that day? To be very honest, I was very happy that they lost five zero because 
five zero also was still too less. I felt like you know considering that we were the our team was less experienced compared to a fully strong Aston Villa team. Like you know, and of course after the game, the Aston Villa players, I mean players, managers coming and. Um, uh, acknowledging uh, the Liverpool team, the kids, and the performance, like you know, it was a pretty class gesture from uh, Dean Smith and uh, John Terry, I think. But uh, I feel maybe what Klopp could have probably done is like you know, kept like maybe two, three experienced players back, like you know. But then again, Klopp wanted his entire winning team, like you know, the team that has lifted the European Cup. He wanted an entire team to lift the Club World Cup as well. So I. Th- so I, I think I can pretty much understand why he decided to do that. So it's fine. It's okay. We'll still fight for it this season. I'm I sure. Pretty, I'm, the I'm, Aston Villa I'm, game. The Aston Villa game. Sorry. Half of the Liverpool players were my age. <laughs> it was just my yeah. They were my age and they played. I feel. I mean, I couldn't do better. <laughs> I feel they played really good. To be very honest. Sorry. How important was winning the club World Cup because that is another trophy which uh, Liverpool have never won in their life, and you were there to witness it. So, yes, good for I in, think, a, in a nutshell for us. I think winning the club World Cup was even more important because of the fact that Klopp took a decision to take the entire team to the World Cup and then give importance to the uh, Carabao Cup, like you know, because God forbid, if we had to lose the club World Cup, then you can imagine how the media would have. Oh, Media yeah. would have taken a stick against Klopp, you know. But yeah, of course. Uh, what to tell you, man? That feeling—it's—it's <laughs> it's such a good feeling, like you know, to see your favorite team lift a trophy in front of thousands of fans, like you know, and the whole stadium singing. It's—it—it it was just too good. Like, I never expected. Thanks to my friends, like you know, who managed to arrange uh, tickets for me, like you know, Nabil and another guy. So it was nice, like you know. I watched the I watched the semi-finals, then I watched the third place match as well, and then finals. Like you know, I was on my seat. Like you know, I did not move. I I I wanted to pee so badly, but I didn't even want to go to the washroom. Like you know, not even during halftime. Like you know, because the queue was so long and all that. But anyhow, like you know, I just didn't want to get up from the seat. Like you know, because that was one moment I want I never wanted to miss out on. Like you know. And what happens next? My favorite, Bobby Firmino scores the winner. And the way he starts celebrating, oh my God, that moment is always, I'm going to cherish that moment forever. It was just too good. Chivangi, after winning the Club World Cup, uh, Liverpool came back and smashed a Leicester City. Like, in spite of having to travel all the way to Qatar, which is quite a long way from uh, London. From and considering Al- the Liverpool. weather as well. Yeah, considering uh, uh, coming from a, weather, a place where the weather is hot and back to cold weather, uh, and they came and they smashed a uh, Leicester 4-0. Uh, how important was that win? I mean, even if they wouldn't have won that match, it would have been okay, understandable. But especially with the media and every team going around at how Klopp is being unfair to other teams, sending his beating here, it was just that we had to make a statement. We had to prove our word that this team can do this and this, but humanly possible things. Show our best performance after just winning a cup and not losing the pace, not losing the mentality that our main focus is going to be Premier League. That's what I was talking about. That yes, we won that cup. Yes, we are going to give our best whenever it is humanly possible. But our Premier League is our main aim and there we are going to give our 100%. And that 4-0 thing happened and like we are back. And uh, three games after that, uh, Liverpool played Man United again at Anfield, and and that Salah goal in the end. And the, so, and imagine like so there were so many chances with Salah that he could have scored. And I was training with, with LFC fans, and everyone had scored. We had won, and I mean the margin was two one right was that time. I guess two. maybe. Two one. Uh, yeah, and uh-huh. and then uh, everyone was like Salah missed right? another shot. Two zero. Two zero. Two zero. It's a two zero. yeah. So Banda, I can. So Salah. Hello. Yeah. So Salah had missed like two or three chances to score a goal, and the rumor started like, okay, the banter started how Salah is going to leave for Real Madrid, etc., etc., and then Salah scores a goal, and everyone's like, yeah, Salah, Salah. So everyone's shouting, and I'm like, okay, nice. Salah is not going to leave for like Liverpool for any matter now. 
I think the best that crazy things. The best part of that night was the local fans singing, "We are going to win the league." Yeah. The first time. We are going to win the league. This season. And I'm going to believe us. It, it didn't make Klopp very happy though, because he knows what happened the last time Liverpool sang "We are going to win the league" <laughs> when Ben Rodgers was uh, manager and we were leading with seven points. But yeah, Klopp, Klopp, Klopp is the person who he kept his cool. He said, "We are not going to." The fans can sing whatever they want, but we are not going to say anything about the league. So, uh, how do you? Uh, what would you sum up the fans? Like, why? Why at that moment did they choose to sing "We are going to win the league"? I mean, we beat the scums, dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that moment was just, you know, we it, it was a moment where we beat, um, after beating City and uh, just running rampage in the league, and it just, it just, show, it just like, it just felt right singing it <laughs> to the United fans. So, yeah. Duncan, do you think it was the right moment uh, for Liverpool fans to think that we are going to win the league? Because I think it was only 24 games or something at, at that time. Well, I didn't even it know about it that you were singing about it. I actually, I actually didn't know that you all started singing about it. I just, I got to know about it. Like that happened on the 19th of January, and I got to know. I start, the first time I heard was around in February about it. I, did, I didn't even know. I didn't even read it on Facebook. I didn't see any anything about it. Yeah, probably you went to sleep. And <laughs> uh, no, I was watching the game. I I, I was fine. With, game. It was a loss to be taken with a with a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, so that's not a problem. <laughs> Shivangi, why do you think the the cop chose that day? Just because it was, it was January. Yes, it was exactly. It was January, and January yeah. is sometimes. We are very scared for our own team because of the great history that we have had. But in January, we are coming in full form and it's like towards the January end when the Manchester United game happened. <laughs> and we are winning against United too and we took a special performance. Like as a fan and as someone who is just overly optimistic and positive, we melted at that time. And we just couldn't stop ourselves if we are crossing the threshold of January and not dropping a form. Who is going to stop us next? We are genuinely going to win, win the league from here. There is no stopping us. And we wanted our, we wanted to like thank our fan players too, right? But like, of course, Klopp and all the players had this thing that they are going to from game to game and game to game. But as fans, we have to show our love. And how do we show our love other than chanting? But then came a rough patch in February. Because it <laughs> two big losses. Uh, one was to... It was, I think, one was uh, Watford and the league and Atletico away. Ah, that uh, Watford that game. Uh. I like to think like Arsenal was having a rough patch. Okay. Ooh. I mean, they or something. So we did not want it to steal away their thunder and their morality and like, everything from them. We wanted <laughs> to provide support to them. And we had just like, 22 points steal or something. So we just, you've always been the Robin Hood kind of club. You know that, right? It was just a nice gesture to them. Like, who the is, the you, know, like, you have never heard of champions losing to a relegated team. It <laughs> happens without the intention of making it happen. Asin, what went wrong in the Watford again? I think uh, the lineup, I would say, because I think uh, Lovren started that game, if I'm not mistaken. Though Sorry. I don't want... I think I don't he want... came on. I think he came on. After. He came on. Joe Gomez got injured yeah. and he came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't want to criticize Lovren because Lovren is a legend for me. No <laughs> matter how much people criticize him, say whatever they want to say, for me, he's a legend because he has played a very important part in Liverpool's success over the last six years. He has played, whether he has performed on the pitch or not, but he has played, like, you know, mentally and morally, he has been there for his team and for, for his best friend, Mo Salah. Salah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, I think... Uh, our, uh, I think Lovren was a bit shaky and I think uh, the goals that we conceded also was partially his fault. But then it's okay, like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is like, you know, we won 32 games and we have clinched the title. That That's the most important thing. If we have to, and if you keep asking me whether you would want to win like one, two games and win a title or you, want, or you don't want to... Uh, 
or you want to go unbeaten and unbeaten season and wait till the last last match i would prefer like it's okay i rather win i rather lose two three matches and win the title well in advance than keeping it until the last day you know so watford also uh, uh, was one of the only teams that came out very aggressive against us because most of the teams usually sit back and we are the one that is aggressive but watford came in yeah. very aggressive especially with sar they totally put sar right on top of his, he was right on top of his game on on that day and, and ended a 40 or 44 unbeaten run for liverpool exactly and, 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 and if i'm not mistaken i think watford was on a losing streak and, yes yes and it was it was just it was such a bad night for me i didn't go to school the next day and my friends were just asked like they called me and they're like where are you where are you why are you not in school because they wanted to make fun of me and, and it continued into uh, a match again uh, a liverpool lost to chelsea in the fa cup and they lost again to atletico at home at anfield uh, in the champions league Uh, we we did not lose that game. I mean, we got knocked out. Extra time. No, we lost it in extra time. Three two. I, I thought it. it was two all. No. No, no, we got uh, Lorente no. scored. Oh, okay. Yeah, scored scored extra. Extra. Okay, lost okay, it in extra time. Yeah, that was a pretty. I mean, it was a pretty hard defeat to take, to be very honest. But then, uh, it was. a few mistakes from the goalkeeper i think which is which then again is okay considering the fact how he has performed for the first nine games he's he's been forgiven so yeah so it's okay like if I, that then a deja vu of carriers uh, sorry a deja vu moment of carriers uh deja vu moment of carriers definitely but then again adrian is way much more experienced compared to carriers so but what what adrian should have done is just made the right decision at that point of time which he didn't i think he lacked concentration at that point of time so yeah but that game was almost like a deja vu moment like a you know a european night and then vinaldum scores to uh, to and you know equalize. you know the thing about this liverpool team is that each player has its own importance in the team every player has its own importance whether it is alisson van dijk Jo Gomez, Trent, Robertson, like you know, if one player is missing out, then you know something or the other happens. Like you know, in that particular area, something will go wrong. I remember the last time I had a live conversation with you, Conrad. You told me about Henderson. Henderson is not going to be playing. Like you know, do you think whether we are going to cross the hundred? I did have hopes, but then you were right. Like you know, it shows like you know how important Henderson's presence was on the pitch, and. i want to add this thing i've been thinking about this today actually a lot of people are i can see like you know a lot of people actually criticizing uh, henderson uh, for being uh, in the upfront for the player mm-hmm. of the season you know i do agree like you know i would i would not want to take anything away from kevin de bruyne mm-hmm. he has been fantastic and he deserves to win the player of the season no doubt about it but then this player who this people who are criticizing henderson for not winning it like you know I don't understand why they don't see Henderson's importance. Like you know, because for me, I feel the role what Henderson has played in the Liverpool team is somewhat similar to what MS Dhoni has played in Team India. I think even Angola Kante has played in 2017-18 for Chelsea. Yeah, exactly. So like you know, these are these leadership qualities. I'm, like I'm sorry to bring up cricket over here, but then of course MS Dhoni has is one of the greatest captains of the indian cricket team is because of his leadership skills like you know on the pitch and off the pitch what he has been doing and the way how he has been educating or training his teammates like you know same way same thing is what henderson is doing with his team like you know and i feel he deserves the credit whether he deserves the player of the season or not that is another another story but i think it is high time the people Respect. should give respect him for what he has done like you know because i feel he is one of the main important reasons behind this success because of his leadership skills so yeah maybe that maybe they're talking about stat wise that's why they have a different opinion about it they are because, talking about because, stat wise mm-hmm. because he has been good i don't think so a lot of people will disagree on that he has been good but his stats aren't showing that so and people who don't watch the game who don't watch liverpool games might yeah. have not seen it they might have just seen glimpses of it or highlights of it or whatever so they must they don't really know about it but yeah and just i 
like I was just watching. I had to watch games because my brother watches games, so I used to watch those games. And I ended up seeing Henderson playing, and I really liked the way, the thing that he was doing, like the way he was commanding the midfield from no matter whatever he was doing, with tackling, shooting, passing, everything. And the moment I said to him, and Henderson is actually playing nice, no? He's playing really well. The he next day injured. he gets injured. <laughs> what a guy, Duncan. And I, and and I was like, uh, we blame Duncan. Just, we blame Duncan. <laughs> I was like, no, this is, because I was actually looking forward to watching him play because he hasn't, at least for me, being a United fan, I didn't regard him high or anything. I haven't seen. I feel like I feel like uh, until recent, until recent, until recently, yeah. Until recently, I don't think even us as Liverpool fans, we didn't un- like we didn't recognize how important or how this he would be to our team, even though he was captain. I mean, he like uh, people still have their uh, mentality that oh Stevie G is still a captain and you know he'll always be our captain. But until recently, he just showed us and made us. I don't know. Just showed us that he can be a proper captain. The the, the moment that changed him was uh, when um, they wanted to sell him, and Brandon Rogers wanted to sell yeah. him for uh, Clint Dempsey. Yeah, that is when he really pulled his socks up, and the rest is history. It hit him really he hard. can choreograph the team really well. Like, but it's such a... the field, of course, Klopp is there, but in field, the way Clint Dempsey and plays well, it's different. Like uh, after post. I mean, we know how it how we suffered majorly because he wasn't there, and without him, we don't have the same mentality to go and push forward and forward and forward. The whole thing, the pressing thing, it's just Hendo controlling everything and everyone and making sure everyone is in the right position. It was such a shame that he got injured just before the Premier Trophy. Okay, back to the season. After the rough patch came the pandemic. Ah, <laughs> had to be something that could that needed to try and stop Liverpool winning the league. Before the pandemic, there was a rumor about World War Three. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Yeah. World War Three happening, and the pandemic. World War Three first. It was, it was crazy. What was the effect of this whole uh, lockdown on Liverpool? Because post lockdown, the team was just not the same. I feel like their head. We got Navy Keda back. Like he's back in form, and that is one good thing we have after the lockdown. We need him, but he's just here now. I feel like we everyone needed it? everyone needed a good haircut after the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> everyone came came on looking like animals, like Bobby Firmino's hair was everywhere. But yeah, did Liverpool lose their momentum uh, post the lockdown because there was no there was no football for almost two months, two and a half months, three months. Yes, I, I mean would've... you could see the sluggishness in the way they played uh, to some extent because. I mean, it, it was understandable because you know, two months of no football and no. I mean, yeah, no training. Hardcore. I training. would not. Okay, I would not agree to that because I think uh, the lockdown didn't affect that much. To be very honest, because one big example that we can actually give is the Crystal Palace game. Crystal I think Palace. we have set a record for that game for being the first team ever to not let an opposition the team. Have a shot in the box. Exactly, like you know, and that is like a. I th- I think it's a pretty big feat, like you know. So the first time it has happened since the records have been kept. Yes, absolutely. But I think what has happened is, if you if you notice, I think uh, when, when when did Henderson get injured for the Crystal Palace game? Uh, I think oh, the, next game. the next game. Yeah. For the next Wasn't game. The next game, the next game, the Aston City Villa. game. No, the next game was Aston Villa. We played against yeah. Aston Villa next. Villa game, yeah. yeah, so Aston Villa, he got, after Aston Villa was a City game. And you see what happens. Like, you know, I think Henderson's absence has, like, you know, uh, has uh, affected the team in some way, I feel, personally, like, you know, because uh, he, the way how he operates the team when he is on the field is something different, like, you know. So, I feel, I feel it was... Henderson not being in the team, and also, I would say like you know because yeah we already won the league when mm-hmm. Chelsea beat Man City, so it was like you know the whole partying and all this, lot of beers, hangover, hangover FC, not to forget. 
So but there was a lot of uh, talk about the the league being null and void, and uh, did you ever get the feeling of winning it? The- oh, Conrad, trust me. Every morning, every time I I offered prayers, there was only one thing that I prayed to God: please don't take anything away. Like you know. take my life away but not the premier league from liverpool like you know they fucking deserve to win it this year like you know even if it is cancelled like you know just give them the trophy like and i used to keep praying this to god like you know but <laughs> thankfully like you know thankfully i mean the good thing has happened like we won the league and the curse is finally broken like and this is just the start of a new thing so yeah rangi were you scared of the league being null and void so i was not scared because if you would read the uefa rules there they have said that the management can control the fixtures right so once the pandemic was over the management could control the fixtures and re- make them like there can be double game weeks or three. they can just postpone the games if they want to because that is written in the rules in letter in writing and it was a lot of on discretion of the uefa board if they wanted to play the game forward or not so if uefa has the control and they want the broadcasters to give them money of course they not be the whole season null and void right they want the future six or seven matches to happen The second thing, of course, as if Liverpool fans are scared because there is something happening in the world that is going against us always. Yeah. So this might have been that factor. So more than checking India stats about Corona virus, you were checking. Okay, let UK get cured, please. UK, please, Boris Johnson, please take care of your country. Yeah. <laughs> we will deal with Modi Still later. Not cured, but yet yeah, it's going on. It's okay. We could do it. It is better. It's more controlled. They can just handle it better now. So that way, it improved, and we won the league. And post-pandemic matches. I think I think the Boris Johnson secretly is a Liverpool fan. I just think so because he himself got the virus, but yet he was moving <laughs> forward to start sport, start sport. Let him get thing, let get everything done quickly. He needs some money, right? The broadcasters and the whole economy yeah. works because. Of- I think yeah, UK's economy is also runs on. I mean, it runs on football. So yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay, so post that um, we had two amazing moments. Uh, I think one is when Chelsea beat Man City, of course, and the other one was on uh, when 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 we beat Chelsea to finally lift uh, the trophy. Uh, what was your which moment would you consider better? The one when uh, Man City beat Chelsea and we won it, or the one where you actually lifted the trophy? Which which day did you feel more happier? Okay, so personally, I couldn't, I could not process when we won the league. When Chelsea won against Man City, because I was not, I did not think that Chelsea had that in themselves, but they did it. And as a fan, I was not used to winning Premier Leagues. You have to understand that. So when we won the league, I am just like looking at my friends and just watching the film. Like, okay, so how do you react when you win the league? Like, that is something that no one has written or talked about. <laughs> so you just have to go through social media and everything, and it's, the feeling I hadn't sink in. But the Chelsea match, in the Chelsea match, we were playing very arrogantly. Like we were very like, okay, we have won the league. We are going to party after this thing, and the atmosphere was so relaxed. It was the first time we were not going crazy about any other match, but just our match. Remember last season, uh, we always thought that after City conceding a goal, we might just have the chance to win the league. And this time it was none of that. It was just watching the match and then hoping for a good ceremony and hoping that virus is over and we join back and have our ceremonies together. So I just really prefer the Chelsea versus Liverpool match more. After what about the ceremony? Like, did you expect Liverpool to do something really so big? They spent almost a million on that uh, podium and in the cup. Damn the transfer budget. Okay, worth me. Yeah, we deserved it. Like. <laughs> It's okay. We deserve it. We deserve to have that celebration and to, you know, to provide a showcase for the fans to remember and go back to all this. I mean, winning the league after thirty years, number one. Second thing is, this team has not just won the Premier League in this one in this three three sixty five days. They are champions of the world. Then Super Cup and also like you know we are current holders of the UEFA Champions League. So I think this deserve this team. Pretty much deserved this kind of celebration, so the owners didn't mind didn't mind it at all. Like you know, to splash the cash, and of course, 
for the fact that the government also i mean the government and the mayor also wanted the people to be at home as much as they could like you know and he thought like you know and of course, of course the liverpool uh, the liverpool management thought like you know by maybe doing such kind of light show or something like you know maybe this can keep the people uh, glued onto their tvs but then you know how liverpool fans are nobody can stop them when it comes to partying or celebrating so yeah when we win we we make sure the whole the whole, the whole world is watching us so yeah yeah i think it was really fantastic because uh, it would be we it, it, it's something we as liverpool fans have, have not seen and you could see you i i do I, I, a club wasn't even so animated during yeah. the champions league trophy he was on another level well yeah, another level his weird dances his weird faces that he was uh, making and there was no better thing to see than hendo coming and doing the his his, his shuffle his shuffle my god <laughs> what a moment that was what a, but i think the 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 most i feel hendo shuffle yeah of course fine that was another thing that's like a signature like for us now but i think uh, the moment that really caught my eye was when um, klopp uh, asked uh, lalana to come and lift the trophy along with him like you know that shows the kind of uh, humbleness that man has like you know how he respects his players his staff members and his entire team like you know and he always says like you know it's always the credit that has to be given to the boys like you know it's not me it's always the boys they are the ones who is performing like you know so yeah i think that that man truly deserves a statue i i i i remember watching the trophy lifting and i i i was paying attention to uh taki mina mino and, and mino. Uh, yes. it was it was a bit sad because calling him forward yeah it, it was no lost. it was, It, no it was it was i felt bad for him because he he was not as connected with the team as other people were and he was like roaming around the the side and you could feel for the guy you know he was he's he's trying his best and yeah and then they called him forward to lift the trophy which was really 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 amazing i think Conrad. he's one of the players one of the other players who actually won the league in two different won a league in two different countries Yeah. So, yeah. I think that there are only two players who have done that. Just two players. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adrian Zola, who played Adria for Zola Bayern and, and for Real. And Milan. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Where did Conrad go? I think he left. Yeah, I think he left. Maybe he will join. My us. lights had gone. My lights. Yeah, we were wondering like what happened. Where did you disappear? <laughs> Okay, so let's have a quick rapid fire. Mm-hmm. The first um, first thing that comes to your head, to your mind, you're going to you're going to answer no thinking, quick. Okay, let's start with Shivangi. Uh, best player. Anderson. Favorite goal. The Salah one, the United match. Favorite game. Match. Man City versus Liverpool. Surprise package of the season. Keita, Keita returning back to form. I really hope this will be staying there. I don't think so. The next question, I even have to like ask you the answer. Uh, best young player. Arnold Trent. Best moment of the season for you. When we lifted the trophy. <laughs> no, because some people have different sure. moments as well. Different moments. <laughs> yeah, When we lifted uh, the trophy. Hustle. Moving on to Hasan, best player. Sadio Mane. Favorite goal. Divo Origi against Everton. That control and that finish. Oof! What a goal it was. Favorite game. Leicester, uh, Liverpool, Leicester, Leicester, Liverpool. Four zero when we won four zero after the Club World Cup. Surprise package of the season for you. Curtis Jones. Young, best young player. Neko Williams. Best moment of the season. Now you're gonna believe us. Now you're gonna believe See, us. That is, Now that is, you're that gonna believe us. That is what I meant. That is what I meant when it shouldn't always be believe. about the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was definitely that moment. Like you know, that Salah goal. 
has to be the best moment okay, now i'm tense now i, I know it's my turn <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> uh best player for you uh henderson favorite goal um i know first thing that comes to mind was fabinho's goal against crystal palace favorite game uh favorite game has to be the city liverpool surprise package of the season i think surprise package was uh, just watching neko williams he played he, he he showed a lot of potential and yeah best young player neko williams best moment of the season see now two are gone now your your turn <laughs> uh, best moment of the season um <laughs> I, i can't think now um See, when when Conor asked me my best moment of the season for the fan zone thing, I said that it was when we lifted the trophy. But uh, Shivangi already said that, so I think my best. And you can say that. There's no there's no problem in that. Yeah, I think best moment of season. Yeah, it 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 will be lifting the trophy. Conor, I'll go. I'll even give you some questions. Best player. Ah, uh, Van Dyke. Favorite goal. The most Allah again. Man United. So that goal really actually had a lot of impact, huh? A yeah. lot of people. <laughs> the, you know, the celebration said it all. The celebration said yeah. it all. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, and, I and also, I didn't even I did I didn't even like the part where Salah took off his jersey and all. The important part for me was. When Allison came sliding over there, and I was like, yes. "Wow, this guy came all the way from there, and the goal was just scored." No, and I think also Duncan. I think uh, Man United was the only team Salah didn't score against. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This was Finally, he yeah, didn't score against. He, he did it. And Liverpool time. also had not beaten us that season, because y'all have beaten everybody else. Yes. We were the only yes. ones remaining. Yes. 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 And yes. it was an Allison assist of sorts, right? That goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was. It was a it counter. Was. It, was it was a counter. It, it, it was. was. It was a beautiful counter. First assist by a Liverpool goalkeeper after Pepe Reina. Pepe Reina. <laughs> uh, surprise package of the season for you, Conrad. For me, I think it was uh, Curtis Jones. Uh, I always had faith in uh, Nico Williams coming through the this thing, but uh, Curtis Jones is the one who really improved upon his game. He, sh- he showed up with the goal in the League Cup against Everton. That was a beautiful goal. That was beautiful, and I think he has a lot more uh, potential. to come to be another scouser on that team. Yeah, club mentioned about that a lot. He's been speaking about it. I've I've watched some watched some videos so that's when I it's heard it's, about it. It's just like I think you have in Goa, you know. Uh, the, the the local fans love to see a local lad playing on, on that yeah. team. Yeah. And Trent is living the Liverpool dream. Oh. If he just improvises on his physicality then he can become the next Coutinho for Liverpool. Ah, uh, so, because he about, has that, talk, he has that style. Talking about Coutinho, what do you think about? He's joining that? Arsenal. <laughs> wait, wait, Duncan. He's joining Arsenal, right? Duncan still has some questions to ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one last one. Best moment of the season. Best moment of the season was being at Anfield, uh, watching the Champions League game. Okay, Premier League then Premier League again again against Man City. You can go with anything. That's up to you. It's of the season, so everything comes in between. For me, it was the Champions League night at Anfield. I have never seen a stay of a football stadium at that decibel level ever in my life before. And hey, for me, I had already been to um, the Etihad. <laughs> the previous day, I had been to the Etihad and a few other games as well. But that was glass shattering. Hey, for me, the best moment of the season was actually us lifting the club World Cup, huh? Yeah, but then, but then, no, but then, wait, wait, no, no, but but then in the league, if you're asking, then it was definitely that moment which I yeah, answered. but you can go with anything actually. Yeah. Sorry. This is a whole season review we are doing. That's why I said season. I didn't say Premier League. If it's a whole season, then of course Club World Cup, man. To be there. No, I was there, of course. Yeah, then. Ah, uh, yeah. You all were saying something. Someone was saying something. Yeah, Keen, you were saying something about I, about Coutinho. 
let's not go to Coutinho. I think Coutinho is. Yeah, let's just leave him in his own. Yeah. Okay, so Lovren has been sold. Y'all are look. Y'all are looking out for a replacement. Who do you think will fit that? I think we're looking at Ozan Kabach. He's a very uh, solid centre back from Schalke, and Klopp is personally talking to him. But what I heard from the podcast yesterday from James Pierce, so looks like something is going to happen. And Klopp is actually he loves doing this. You know, he loves involving himself in the transfers. He doesn't leave it only to Michael Edwards uh, to do all the talking. He himself. Uh, James Pierce just said that Klopp himself is talking to the chairman at Schalke about this. Yeah, yeah. Move. So it 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 shows a lot about how the club is run at the moment. Yeah, but don't you think like that is that one transfer is enough for y'all, or y'all need more transfers because because if you have seen in the if you have seen the last two seasons also, where if you see City how they did. Two seasons, they had the same team. They bought, I think, so they bought in the next one. They bought someone, and now they dropped. Y'all have been, y'all have like consistent seasons, both the seasons, with a difference of one point and trophies coming in from somewhere or the other. But don't you think that playing the same squad is going to wear them out, get them a bit, get the get them like. Get the other clubs to actually understand what to do, how to tackle these players. Yeah, but every time Keita gets injured and comes back, Klopp says he's a new signing. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually a new, like a new signing after Anderson got injured and he started playing. If for me surprise package, if you would ask, because whatever I've seen, I have after this after post lockdown, I've watched like like every game, like any team was playing on on TV. I was watching. It was something like that for me. I would say Keita would be the surprise package move if you if you go to see post lockdown. But he is something that he has to sign some against Newcastle. I guess that too. was. Yes, Shivam. But yes. like, if we really have to sign a player, a left back would be nice. Or maybe we can get if we really have to maybe Mbappe because Mbappe deserves to play under Klopp. Like he deserves. He's a good player. He has worked really hard. Now it's his time to you know. Be in the glory. It would be really nice if you sign him. What personally, a dream! What a dream come true it would be, Shivangi. I swear. Mbappe 2020. But personally, Mbappe 2020. Yeah, actually... We personally, all had actually... hopes. So, sorry, sorry, Keen. Let me just say this. Yeah, no, sorry, we, yeah. we, we all had hopes after Trent uh, Alexander Arnold uh, did that celebration. During the yeah. celebration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. FIFA, FIFA ended up taking it pretty well, though. Gave that celebration for both of them in FIFA in the new oh, one, which is coming. Oh, what FIFA, bro? Our own fans are taking that celebration pretty well nowadays. You see, every other comment they are bloody putting that GIF only everywhere. Yeah. So, Akin, can you think? Yeah. What do you all think about the fact that we need? Uh, you know, what do you all think about the fact of Firmino's role in the squad? Because currently, I feel like it's, it's, I, it's a, it's, 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 A forward and like a attacking midfielder for or a creative midfielder for Firmino, because I feel like he gets I feel like he gets mixed up a bit, like and I really don't know, you know. Not yeah, I see. Out of Salah, he's the game better than anyone else. I mean, every time Firmino gets injured, he knows the chances of us scoring goals just goes down by like thirty, forty percent. So like Firmino. Key player that makes the goals happen more than scoring the goals himself. Yeah, but uh, uh, like previously we always had this um, rumor of like Timo Werner or a proper number nine, you know, a proper uh, lethal forward. Where do you see like a a forward in like Timo Werner or someone? Say not Timo Werner because now he's in uh, <laughs> Chelsea. But you know, if we get a a proper striker, if Klopp is searching for a striker, do you see? For me, no. Starting or compared to, if we sign a proper striker, he'll be on the bench. I can assure you that. Yeah, <laughs> if we sign a proper striker, then Firmino will be on the bench for sure. 
No, no, I'm saying the striker will be on the bench. The striker, the striker, the striker. Would be on the, bench. <laughs> the striker. I'm also wondering, like, you know, I'm, I love Fabi, I, lo- I love Fabinho. Like, please don't say like that about Fabinho. See, Bobby is a very integral part of this uh, yeah. team uh, because he's the one that does the dirty work up front. Because yeah. uh, I think um, uh, Mane and Salah, because of him, either he pulls the strikers off to give create space for Salah or he creates space for Mane, which is very important for these uh, two guys on the. On each side of uh, Bobby. One thing I miss so much about this uh, uh, Liverpool team is, you know that 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 uh, the, you know because currently I think it was one match that I was watching recently, uh, uh, where the the ball was just moving from side to side on the midfield. You know, it was not being played up front, and it was it got so boring. You know, at one point, um, so you know you you always miss that creative factor which Coutinho used to give. You know. Please so know the know. same player that loved us long time ago, right? Could he must change? Right. He needed. <laughs> Basically, he's just basically he's just trying to say that he misses Coutinho and he wants Coutinho back. High five to you, brave, and I want the same. Yeah. I want that Coutinho, you know, the yeah. which left before he left. No, there is no doubt about it that if he ever joins Liverpool back again, he will still be the same. Like you know, I don't think so. His form is going to dip or he's going to be underperforming or something. I think he's still going to be that classy player, like you know, who could score from who could score screamers. And who could give this? Uh, and to be very honest, I'll tell you something. If Coutinho was still in Liverpool team, then he would have been in the same level as Kevin De Bruyne. I think these two players. He wanted who, to leave. Yeah, but then he wanted to leave. So it's okay. It's fine. But then see, we have to take. We have to think about. He this wanted also. to win the Champions League. If Coutinho <laughs> hadn't to leave, if Coutinho hadn't to leave, we wouldn't have got Van Dijk and Allison. Yeah. We have to think about exactly. That. So, See that that's, that that like that like in in the sense that I don't I don't regret the Coutinho signing, but I just miss the attacking factor, the, the, yes. the creative factor in our team. I don't I I never thought or even imagined Liverpool spending anything above fifty million on players, and it all was came true because of Coutinho doing it. Yeah. Just going and you're getting the money and you're getting one of the best. Best duo, uh, best duo. It was worth yeah, it. At the end of the day, it was worth it, man. Because see, when we signed these two people, in return, what we got, we got four trophies, man. I think it was worth it. Obviously, Allison, famous... Allison, Allison has proved himself. Even at Roma, he, he's made his name over there. But Van Dijk, when he was playing at Southampton, people were people actually didn't were not. He was overlooked. But when he came to Liverpool, you actually saw what he's capable of and what he's done. Also, to be very honest, I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, when we signed uh, initially, when Klopp signed uh, Sadio Mane, people were laughing at us, like you know, right. what is Klopp doing? Like you know, who is he signing? Like you know, nobody even knows about him. This and all. And today, when you look at Sadio Mane, he is a player who is at the same level as Mbappe, Neymar, and all this kind of players. Like you know, his value has gone that high. Like you know, so I think at the end of the day, credit. Is to be given to Klopp for molding those players in a way and like you know making sure that they are happy with their roles in the team and then they deliver. You know, I did a podcast recently and I was and I was asked and I was asked if you could choose one player from the Liverpool squad that you would take into your United squad and I didn't even think. I re- later realized that there was Allison, there was Van Dijk, but the first. Thing that came to my mind was Mane. I I've watched him since the day he used to play for Southampton, and he terrorizes people. I still, from whichever side I still come. remember. I still remember that Southampton game in twenty nil nil draw, twenty sixteen, where he came and he scored Absolutely. the fastest hat trick against. Fastest hat trick, yeah. Oh, that was the yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that was two two minutes two minutes right. Yeah, two minutes thirty seconds. It was in twenty seventeen, I think. Yeah. Okay, guys, we are way past our time now, and oh, uh, we are way past. <laughs> so, and people also like if you overdo it, also people that it decreases the people watching it and uh, tend yeah. to get a little. Yes. Uh, so uh, before we close, uh, I want to ask everyone, uh, especially you all four, uh, you know, just I just want to to sum up the season in one sentence. 
we'll start with Afil. We have definitely turned ourselves from doubters to believers, and now we only keep believing. We are not going to doubt ourselves ever again. We are only going to be believing in ourselves. Long sentence. <laughs> yeah, that was one. <laughs> so yeah. Wait, one word or one sentence? One sentence. One sentence. Just consistent. You know, just consistency was a was a was just the winning factor for us. The consistency was. Yeah. This season was ours. Yes, this season was ours. This year, this year was ours. You should say, like you know, finally this year was ours. <laughs> and and we won it, and 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 we had to win it in the most dramatic fashion. You know, dramatic. the world is the the world is gonna die or something. The and, world and, is and, ending, and something. The world. Everything happened. Everything you can imagine happened. The world is ending and Liverpool is winning the league. What? <laughs> Even the pandemic couldn't stop Liverpool. Even the pandemic couldn't stop. Even the world war couldn't stop. Nothing could stop Liverpool winning. I remember. From the league. I, remember I remember seeing those memes. You know, the uh, uh, after thirty years, Liverpool is finally winning, and pan- the p- pandemic comes and stops them. <laughs> I think Mario Balotelli made a statement once, right? The day when Liverpool wins the league, it's going to be end of the world. I don't know if it was true or fake. You never know, Balotelli. Balotelli is known for. He can say anything. He can say. It's always him. It's always. It's always him. It's always him. I just saw Hassan kissing the liver bird, and I remember in Conrad when he kissed the New Balance sign. That was one. One bloody night for him. I, I was really, I was really drunk, and I was trying to click a, a video, video, and I ended up kissing up the NB badge in the. But 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 it it turned out well because NB was in the last year. Yeah. <laughs> and they were actually lucky for us. I kind of an ode to NB. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this show. Um, it's been yeah. fun talking to you all, and thank you for your insights yeah. into the season. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Keen. Thank you for having us. This is nice talking to you all. Yeah, same here. Yeah. And hope for a better season next year. Yes, definitely. Devil. 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 Charles yeah, is the finishing one. Conrad, you go. You continue talking. You remove that live okay, from I'll Facebook. Just, okay, I'll just off the live so that we can stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>